Hello there, this is Pastor Marcus D. King, Senior Pastor, Disciple Central Community Church. And listen, this is just uh, spiritual growth tips, and I'll be sharing with some more videos after this one. Uh, this one will be uh, one of, I think I'm going to do four videos on how to fast successfully. Uh, there are a lot of people out there that fast, many who have been experienced uh, with fasting through the years. There's some others who have fasted before, but really haven't really understood uh, the whole concept of fasting from a biblical standpoint. Really just kind of been following what's going on. Then there are some who have never fasted before, this is your first time, uh, or you've never fasted because you didn't think you could do it. You didn't have any understanding. These videos on spiritual growth tips are simply this, just tips. Uh, we're going to go through uh, so you can have some scriptures, some verses to read, to study on your own. It's not to do all the work for you. It's really to get you going and get you some uh, understanding on certain topics. And this topic will be fasting. First video, this video will be a video on reasons for fast. Reasons for fast. Uh, video two will be different types of fast. I mean, you have your partial, your complete, your corporate, your personal, many know the Daniel fast, all those. So we'll, we'll go into that on different types of fast. And then we'll look at hindrances uh, to an effective fast. You have hindrances to an effective fast because you want to make sure you have an effective fast, not just a hunger strike. You want to make sure you're in line with uh, the word and then you're doing the things that make your fast effective. And in that uh, third video, we may end up, uh, if we don't do a fourth one, on what happens during your fast, what are some of the things that you can expect, uh, then some suggestions for fasting, and then some suggestions for things to you know, give up during your sacrificial fast. So this first video, reasons for fast. Second video, if this is uh, not what you're looking for, the second video will be different types of fast. And then the third one will be hindrances to an effective fast with the other things that we're talking about. Well, listen, these videos aren't going to be real, real long. I'm already at two minutes right now. I'm going to give you 10 reasons for fast. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to get a biblical translation, a Bible translation. Um, you know, uh, after being in the ministry, reading, growing uh, up in the Bible, and in the, should I say reading the Bible in church uh, and through the years, I've, I've found that different translations, transliterations, uh, help you get a better understanding of it. Uh, of course, you know, many, when you're in seminary, they tell you that New American Standard is the closest to the real translation and all those other deals. But anyway, just train yourself to read the word in, in many different ones to get the original language. If you don't know all that, we ain't got to get all deep like that. What I'm going to do is read from one of my favorite translations because it makes it more simple. No, thus is the house. It's just more contemporary writing, same meaning. That's the New Living Translation. So, i got about seven to eight minutes left. I want to go ahead and go through some verses very quickly. Uh, there's a handout. You can go along with me and read along with this. So uh, if, you, if you have this on Facebook or Constant Contact, you recognize there's a handout that there's a link you can click. Just click that link. You can download that handout. You can go along with me on, the on these verses. And if you miss something I say on here, it's on your handout. So... Uh, if you're not, what you can do is simply email me at uh, Marcus at MarcusDKing.com. Uh, you can email that and uh, do our best to get those uh, handouts to you wherever you are. All right. In the next few minutes, one, make sure you take time to read Isaiah 58. I'm not going through that right now. We'll go through that another time. I'm going to go through several verses. Uh, Ten reasons for fast. we got to get cl clarity on what, how, how do people fast in the Bible? Um, what were some of the reasons for fast? Uh, first one is, uh, well, it's not in particular order. I'm just going through uh, listing them. They're not like in just this order, but these are some that you can look at. Uh, Jonah chapter 3. Jonah chapter 3 verses 4 through 10 show us this, that there was a fast for repentance to ward off present or future discipline. God was going to bring discipline uh, to the place of Nineveh, where Jonah was supposed to go. And um, what happened is when Jonah gave that word from the Lord, uh, the leaders 
Everybody in the whole place uh, went on a fast because they didn't want the judgment of God uh, to deal with them, the future discipline of God to come upon them. Jonah, as a prophet, went, spoke the word, and everyone went on a fast. And God with, with, uh, withheld his hand, the things that took place. So number one, uh, for repentance, to ward off present or future discipline. That's found in Jonah chapter 3. Verses 4 through 10, Bible on it. Second reason, second reason. Second reason that we find for fast, I mean, or one other reason in the Bible, number two, to humble ourselves. Uh, I'm going to read, uh, that's a quick one to read, Psalm 35, Psalm 35, to humble ourselves. Psalm 35, of course we know who wrote the majority of the Psalms was King David, and this one is by King David. Psalm 35, verse 13. Uh, wherever you are, if you can't catch up with me, don't worry about it. Just replay the video. Psalm 35 verse 13 says, Yet when they were ill, I grieved for them. I denied myself by fasting for them. But my prayers returned unanswered. Yet they were ill, I grieved for them. I denied myself by fasting. But my prayers returned unanswered. I mean, David humbled himself He's grieving for somebody else. So, so he's grieving for somebody else by denying himself by fasting for somebody else. So we actually see in this humbling ourselves and, and also making sure we're putting somebody else uh, in the midst of our fast. We're going to fast not just for ourselves. Humbling ourselves, fast for someone else. All right, so that's Psalm 35, verse 13. Another one, uh, Ezra. Chapter 8, and you this is real a real good one to look at when you read that story. Ezra chapter 8, verses 21 and 23 highlight this, but read all of Ezra 8, and that, that'll be good. Ezra, E-Z-R-A, chapter 8. Ezra chapter 8 shows us that we can fast for, here it is, for protection of myself, family, personal property. Protection of myself, family, Personal property. I told you, I'm not going to do all the work for you. You got to go in and read that word yourself. So you won't think this little preacher is up here just making up stuff to sound good. Protection for myself, family, personal property. Ezra, chapter 8, verses 21 and 23. Another one, I'll read this one for you. James, James, that's New Testament. James, chapter 4, verse 8. James, chapter 4, verse 8. Here's one. Because we know James is, you know, I mean, everybody always says they got a favorite book of the Bible. I say the same thing. But truth is, I love the whole word, all of it. But there are some that stick out and stand out to me more. James is one of them. James chapter 4, verse 8. Uh, I'll actually read back. Mm, well, yeah, I'll go to verse 8. I'll just read verse 8. James chapter 4, verse 8. New Living Translation. This is how it reads. This is how it sounds. It says, and this, of course, is a continuation of some conversations going on before, so make sure you read before so you can get the full context. But verse 8 says, Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Of course, part of fasting is purification, purif purifying ourselves. So it doesn't just come out and say fasting, but some of the behaviors of fasting are there. And we do understand that what fasting is, is giving up something in order to gain uh, more intimacy with God. You're not getting more of God. You have the same amount of God when you get saved and you have a relationship with him. It's he has more of you, more of your attention, more of uh, allegiance at the particular area. So here we go. James chapter 4. We saw that. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts. For your loyalty is divided between God and the world. First part of that was come close to God. And God will come close to you. That's why we fast. To come close to God. So God can come closer to us. Now, not just that. That was number four. Number five. Here it is. Same book. James chapter four, verse seven. Let's back up. Verse seven. Verse seven says this. So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Look at that progression. Humble yourselves before God. I mean, on um, humility, we already saw a part of fasting is humbling ourselves. So when you humble yourself before God, now you can 
resist the devil. I mean, here's the deal. You have to be humble and, and you know, another, another translator talks about submit to God, then resist the devil. I have to be submitted to God in order to resist the devil because I can't do it in my own power. You're talking about, I rebuke the devil. Not if you're not submitted to God. The devil just looking at you like, you can't do that. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So, humble yourselves before God. Fasting helps me humble myself, not to think more highly of myself, not to be so arrogant, not to be so pompous, not to be so full of pride, not to be so full of whatever sin or behaviors that aren't pleasing to God. God opposes the proud. Verse 6 says that he opposes the proud, but God loves the humble person. I mean, he loves everyone, but he, he wants us to be in a position of, our, of humility before him. And then it says, humble yourself before God. Resist the devil, and look what happens. He will flee from you. That is the only way Satan can be resisted. Humility before God. Fasting helps us be humble before God. Now we're in position to defend ourselves with the power of God as our backup, and Satan will flee. So that's to resist the power of the devil. Let me hurry up. Number six. Another reason is Matthew chapter 17, verses 20 through 21. Read that. 17 through 21. I'm sorry. Matthew chapter 17, verses 20 through 21. Here's that. What's another reason for fast? Number six, for deliverance from demonic possession. From deliverance from demonic possession. I mean, it's right here in the Bible. Demonic possession. 17, 20 through 21. Look at this text. Uh, and these were the disciples. They couldn't cast out a demon. And they're asking Jesus why we couldn't cast out this demon from this boy. In verse 20, Jesus says in the New Living Translation, you don't have enough faith, Jesus told them. I'll tell you the truth. If you had faith, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would be, uh, and it, it, would, it would move. Nothing would be impossible. There's another part that says you must have fasting and prayer. This, time, this kind comes out by fasting and prayer. That's another translation. I believe that's the King James translation or the NIV. I can't remember exactly. But it will say this kind comes out by fasting and praying. You need both working together, prayer and fasting. Fasting helps humble ourselves more, submit ourselves. Once again, James taught us, then we can resist the devil. Jesus says, you're trying to do it in your own strength. You need to be more humble, more dependent upon God, not dependent upon your strength. Fast and helps you get in that position. All right. Now, next one. So for deliverance and demonic possession. Deliverance uh, and de delivering people and dealing with people who are de demon possessed. That's real. That's Bible. That's for real. No matter what uh, university, church you go to, uh, Bible is, is here. Whether you go to church or not, it's, it's there. If you never seen that in your life, let me tell you something. It's something to see. Uh, some things can't be explained. It must be experienced before you become a believer in what's written. All right, here's another reason. 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 2 Chronicles 7.14. Very familiar past description. 2 Chronicles 7.14, another reason for fasting. You remember this verse. This reason for number seven is for healing, for healing, for healing. Number seven, for healing. What's the verse say? 2 Chronicles 7.14, you read the rest of that. If my people who are called by my name, so here it is, Humble themselves. We already know. That's a position of fasting. That what that's what one of the goals. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins. And what's the last phrase? Heal their land. Healing. I mean, when you fast, you're putting yourself in position to make sure that healing can take place. I mean, you're positioning for healing. And this is talking about healing the land, healing the nation. But people are in the nation. People are in the land. Healing can take place in whatever your land is. I mean, that's what, what God was talking with Solomon. Of course, it was the answer to his prayer. Uh, and so we see those things. But Second Chronicles seven fourteen healing. Uh, and that's of nations, individuals, relationships, whatever needs healing. Mind. Number eight, uh, as I'm moving on. Number eight. Number eight. Uh, the eighth reason that I, I found for fasting, it is in found in James 4 and 6. We read that a second ago, but it's this, to get extra help and blessings from God. I mean, 
extra help and blessings from God? Is that even biblical? Well, let's find out. Let's find out. Extra help. Look at what verse uh, 6 says. Uh, and this whole chapter 4 is talking about drawing close to God. You'll see that in your thing. Uh, but without getting all deep into it. Number 6. I mean, verse 6, James 4 says this. But he gives us, talking about God, even more grace to stand against such evil desires. As the scriptures say, God opposes the proud, but favors the humble. He opposes the proud, favors the humble. We're talking about his people. I mean, we're talking about God's people. He opposes the proud, any, any kind of people, but really we're still talking about his people. Opposes the proud. That means there are some blessings I'm forfeiting by not being humble. But then he says he favors the humble. Favor, of course, is God's unmerited favor. I open doors for favor and favors extra to come my way. Added blessings. I don't want to hinder my blessings with the wrong attitude. Another scripture that can back it up, I believe it's uh, 1 Peter 5. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due season. I mean, it will be your season, your due season. There's a season due for you and due for us when we humble ourselves. And that means God is not opposing us, but he's favoring us. We talk about favor. Favor comes with humility. Uh, can we handle favor? And favor? One of the ways to activate favor is humility. And that is through fasting. One way we can do that is through fasting. So you want favor? Fast. Make sure it's the right kind of fast. Here it is. So get extra help and bless from God. God's going to help. He wants to be at our help, but he tells us, tells us to do this. Call out to me and I will answer. There are certain things we got to do to activate God in certain senses. Sometimes just by his divine mercy and grace and his love, he just moves. Other times he tells us, hey, call out to me, ask, cry out. I mean, he's telling us to do that because we're in relationship. All right. So we have responsibility. We're, we're working with him. Uh, with our deliverance. So, number nine. What's another one? For direction from God. Well, you want direction for your life? Good way to do that is fasting. Direction. That's Ezra chapter 8, verse 21. And then 2 Chronicles. You, this Second Chronicles chapter 20, verses 1 through 29. That is a wonderful uh, passage to study about direction. Because there are so many things you find in there. And I'm not going to go through all of that because of time. I want to make this a 20-minute video. I want it to be shorter, but I'm a preacher. So that's why we keep talking. I'm a preacher. It's 17 minutes counting down. I got two minutes to wrap this up. For direction from God, that's Ezra chapter 8, verse 21, and then 2 Chronicles 20, 1 through 29. And then uh, the last one that I have is uh, a familiar scripture we've already given, but there's something else in there that I found uh, in, in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, that whole rest of that verse and the rest of the verses that follow. Uh, now, that is this. One, the, the tenth reason for fasting is to gain control of yourself. Gain control of yourself. We know Galatians, I believe, chapter 5, talks about having self-control. Well, that means there are certain things God's not going to stop. He's telling you, hey, put yourself in a position where you can control yourself. I'm not taking everything from you. you got to control yourself in that environment. And one way we can break ourselves down, our our uh, evil inclinations, our selfish ways, grabbing stuff that God doesn't want us to grab, being able to control ourselves, not in our flesh. We got to do that in the spirit. And that becomes what a point of, of abstinence. That's, I mean, yeah, abstinence, abstaining from things. That's where food, some people fast, you know, to lose weight and, and, and not have certain behaviors and not walk down certain roads. That's good. That helps with self-control. Pushing something away that hindered, that, that may be an interruption from you and God being intimate. Something that may not be, it may be good, but right now you want to push that away. Uh, and so that that's what we want to do in order to gain control, gain strength. Some things you devoid. TV, too much time, distracting you in other areas of your life, push away fast from your TV. Uh, certain uh, songs you listen to, certain things that you do, push it back. Uh, eating habits, push it back. And then you can be able to gain control of yourself. You eat too much. You gain too much weight. Push it back fast. Cleanse your system. And you can be able to gain control. That's Second Chronicles uh, 7.14. Uh, seek, pray, 
then you can turn. If my people who call by my name shall humble themselves, uh, I forgot the scripture. <laughs> I can read it. If my people who call by my name shall humble themselves, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, uh, pray, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, heal their land. I mean, God wants us to seek, pray. Then you can turn, seek him, pray to him. Then we can turn. I mean, that's about self-control, gaining self-control. Let me repeat them, and we're going to close the video. One reason for fasting, for repentance, to ward off present or future discipline. Number two, to humble ourselves. Number three, for protection of myself, family, personal property. Number four, to draw closer to God. Number five, to resist the power of the devil. Number six, for deliverance from demonic possession. Number seven, healing. Number eight, to get, an, to get extra help and blessings from God. Number nine, for direction from God. And number 10, to gain control of yourself. Here's the thing. Read this. Study this for yourself. Uh, people have different views on fasting and everything else. That's fine. Uh, read it for yourself. Get in it. And whatever the case, make sure you're fasting from a biblical standpoint. Those are 10 good reasons. You can find the Bible actions and actual fast that took place. And you can be able to apply those principles to your life when you fast. Well, Pastor Marcus D. King signing off. That's video one. 10 reasons for fast. See you on round number two. Be blessed.